I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to another installment of MD's No Bull Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo with Chris Aceto. And Chris, we have a new format now. We are now officially muscular development again. And uh, we have taken over ownership of that. And I think we might as well use the old name, right? Yeah, we, we had an investor. They invested in uh, uh, Sunbeam, uh, which is, of course, defunct, and DeLorean Cars, which is defunct, and Sports Illustrated, which is defunct. So they... They, they're going after marquee names and they approached us there you go. to uh, purchase the uh, the name Muscular. We have to call it, though, Undevelopment until the sale actually closes. That's true. And we're going back to Noble Radio because that was, you know, Blackman's favorite um, thing. So we're MD. No, the, they, the investors want us to call it All Bull Radio. Noble Radio. <laughs> <laughs> April, April, Fool. Fool. April Fools, April Fools. It's gonna. It's not really April Fools yet, but it, it's close enough. So I figured we would play a stupid joke on you. All right, but we do have some stuff to talk about today. We have the Arnold Brazil coming up this coming weekend. I'm excited. Three Arnolds within like a very short time frame. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's building. A, you know, it's building a lot of momentum for the name, partially because. One, the prize money. Two, the announcement of more prize money to come. Uh, three, the fact that they're back, back, back. And four, you know, the level of competition at both Ohio and in the UK. You know, it wouldn't have the crazy momentum, even with the money, really, if you didn't have such great shows in terms of competition. Right. Right. So, well, you know, I, you know yeah. go ahead. That was it. Nothing no. else to No, you know, I, I I remember a time when we had, like, I think it was at five, we had one in every continent pretty much, right? We had the yeah. Arnold South America, uh, we had Arnold South Africa, we had Arnold Australia, Arnold Brazil, Arnold, like, well, Brazil was South America, and then we had Arnold USA, and then we had Arnold uh, Europe, which was the uh, Spain one. And... I don't know what happened. Was it? Was it? I think that they didn't have good partners. I know. Obviously, COVID kind of eclipsed the the Tony Doherty one in Australia, which I thought was great. And um, so, but I, I liked when we had one on every continent. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, because well, I wanted you know, it to be like a, you know, like they have in tennis, the Grand Slam. Like if you win all the majors in yeah. Australia, you know, Wimbledon, U.S. Open, and what was the other one? I think you had to win French Open or something like that. You get the Grand Slam. We needed. A, I wanted to have a Grand, a Grand Slam Arnold, you know, title. I didn't. I didn't want to say, but they wanted to pay Hardy two hundred to go to Brazil. <laughs> Did they really? Is that true? No, I just just made that up. Yeah. I made that up for desktop cool. bodybuilding. I wanted to text it to desktop bodybuilding. <laughs> go check it out <laughs> to see if he would. <laughs> I did his show the other day again. I'm sure Xavier will oh, probably pop him. Yeah. What was the topic? I don't even remember what we talked about. <laughs> we answered some questions from the viewers. No, we talked a little bit about, you know, a little bit about everything pretty much in, in, the, in the world. I, I got to tell you, I, I, I enjoy going on the show, but it's a different energy on that show. And um, I realize when I'm not running the show that I, I have a very limited, uh, I, I can't make it more than an hour. I'm like, I'm like becoming like my father. If I'm not talking the whole time, <laughs> I, can't, I can't sit still that long. <laughs> it's going to be your party game. Yeah. Well, if I'm talking, it's like, you know, I, I, I lose track of time, but you know, if I have to like, you know, take my turn, take turns, it's, it's, it's harder to do an hour. So I, the truth is I don't have that much time, but I, I like doing Xavier show because he'll, he'll do our show anytime I ask him to. So. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. I like to make fun of Xavier, but I, I make fun of the people I like <laughs> with the exception to George mm -hmm. Farrah. You know, the funny George. thing is I know, I know Xavier better than I know a lot of the other people in our industry. I've stayed at Xavier's house, you know, so like yeah. in, in Tasmania of all places. So think about that. I have like a, I know, I know all about him. Yeah, long history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So anyway, thank you, Chase. I did. I, I'm, I'm getting WhatsApp messages from Who? Milos. I sent, Milos, I sent him a picture of a leg to see if he could identify it. And he's stumped. <laughs> He and stopped? he just texted me. I put his text up. He said, I'm in the movies, but I'll let you know. He's trying to dissect the leg to find out whose it is. Was it uh, Good Vitos? Yeah, so look, leg shot I sent you today. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> good Vito looks good. We're going to talk about the Arnold Brazil in a minute. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of good guys entering that show. This is going to be a tough, tough battle this coming weekend. But before we get to that, I wanted to put up some um, – first of all, I saw this on Instagram. Let me pull this up. Uh, Chuck Norris is 84 today. Did you know that? 84. 48. <laughs> you, you, you all. Looking pretty good still. 84. You know, I'm 84 yeah. today. But I feel he's like gonna fight, he's going to fight the winner of uh, Jake Paul. He's going to fight Tyson next. Day. <laughs> Chuck Norris was a bad dude. Don't you remember back in the seventies and eighties, man? Oh yeah, yeah. But I never, I never, I never. He was around around Arnold's time too in action movies, and I didn't like that he was didn't have a physique, so I couldn't buy into it. <laughs> I know what you're saying. He he looked like a fraud almost. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you can't. You got to have the body. That's why right. you know, Stallone right. and Arnold. <laughs> See, you know, Van Damme had Van Damme had a physique. Right. At least Charles Bronson shot people with guns, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah. and Clint Eastwood too. Clint, well, Clint Eastwood had a physique. Louis Gossett just passed away at eighty-four. I, I think. saw. It. You know, I saw Rick Wayne posted something on Facebook about it. Evidently, I guess Lou Gossett Jr. had come to the Weeder headquarters when Rick Wayne was the uh, editor in chief there, and he wanted to. Um, well, he I guess he asked to see Rick Wayne, and, and of course they they escorted him upstairs and. Rick Wayne had never met him, and he was honored, obviously. And he said, "What, what can I, what can I do for you?" And he's like, "I, I need you to get me in shape. I got to do a movie." You know, I wonder if it was an officer and a gentleman because he was in really good shape for that movie. Yeah. And Rick Wayne trained him, I guess, and you know, helped him with his diet and all that stuff. So, really? Yeah. I didn't, did you know that story? I didn't know that story. Yeah, it was a he good did story. look. He looked. He was in very good shape for officer and a gentleman. I'm, I imagine it had to be that movie because he was. He could have played fucking Apollo Creed the way he looked in that movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and how old was uh was he, Lou Gossett Jr.? I think he was 84. That's why I said Chuck Norris. Oh, the same age? Oh. That's pretty good. Hey, 84 is not bad. I you know when I'm sure when you get to 80, 84 sounds a little <laughs> it sounds too speak, young. Speak but... for yourself. Speak for yourself. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me pull this picture up here. Let's get that Lou Gossett Jr. picture up there. What do you think Rick Wayne put him on back then? Think you put him on some uh, anabolics? No, he probably, you know, I put him on, you know, Rick Wayne was low carb error, high fat. Yeah. Yeah. He had, he had like, uh, good arms, Lou Gossett Jr., if I remember correctly. Yeah, very good arms. Yeah. Think Not about like how many guys in Hollywood, you know, look at the Jake Gyllenhaal look really good for that uh, Roadhouse yeah. movie, although I heard the movie sucked, but. You can't make a movie after like a Swayze movie. It's like trying to make Point Break again, you know, after Swayze and, yeah. and Keanu Reeves were in it. It's like just there's some movies you can't remake. You can't remake The Godfather. There's some movies that just are not remakeable, but they'll try anyway. Pa Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse is irreplaceable as far as I'm concerned. And Sam Elliott was great in that movie too. Yeah, it's like trying to, yeah. No, this right. guy's saying you should have started in Eagle Iron Eagles too, Chris. Yeah, Iron Eagles too. <laughs> Iron, Eagles. Iron Eagles with Luke Jr. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Someone said Mr. G should fight Big Lenny and Chuck Norris. Yeah, that would be a good fight. So we had some guests posing this past weekend too. Let me pull those up. I saw Samson Dowd a guest posed in Germany. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I didn't see it. What did you think of the way he looked? Um, I thought it looked great. I mean, how, 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 how not great could Kenny look? He just had a show. Yeah, I know. I, I almost think like after he relaxes a little bit and, you know, he, he sometimes looks better, you know. Well, because he's round with a 
a good taper, so a little bit heavier. Right. Right. Still going to look, you know, it's going to accentuate the roundness. Right. True. What do you think he weighs here? He looks like he's about 300 pounds here. Um, I don't know. What's he weigh on stage? If you ask Milos, I don't know. He'll probably say 300. He's probably like 285. If I had to guess. Yeah, max. I would think. I mean, he's, he almost looks just lean here as he did on stage. He's got a little water in him, but his muscles are almost popping more, you know? Well, he could have play it again, I'll tell you. Oh, okay, I'll play it again. No, then get the Superman glasses on. <laughs> Let me put my Superman glasses on, too. X-ray vision. I'm, I'm looking at a video of, it's like on my iPhone, it's like three centimeters by three centimeters. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> no, they because I mean he's he's round, but I mean he's don't fool yourself. It's not he's pretty lean, Chris. He's just what he's a little I, watery, you know. Lean, but can you imagine him on stage like this? No, I'm not saying you should compete like this. I'm just saying that you know No, he looks he, great. Of course yeah. he looks great. He's probably 30 pounds bigger than he was. He wasn't at the show, and he's not no, he's really probably, that. He's probably 10, 12, max. Maybe 14, 14 pounds. All right, and then we had, um, let me pull up. We had another guest posing this past weekend by Hunter Labrada, who looked really good. He's posing 295. I don't know. I want to ask your opinion if you think he's 295. First, yeah, I mean, how you think he looks? You think that's two ninety five? I thought he looks outstanding. No, I said he looks good. You think he's two ninety five? Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. That's two ninety five. He's 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 gigantic there. Absolutely gigantic. He looked big at the uh, at the Arnold when I saw him. He said he had put on as much more. I guess that was as big as he's ever been. He's not. He's he's kind of lean still. He's got glutes. You very, know, not, not sharp, but you know he's got him. Look at his hands. Very lean. But this size and this weight, he's very lean. He he seems to hold the weight well on his body, you know. His waist is still pretty small. It's very small, actually. His arms, you know, got look bigger. This is a good look for him. I think he I think he did what he had to do. I wonder is he I'm assuming he's probably gonna be guest posing at the Pittsburgh. Super I don't know. Guest I don't know who's going or who's not going. Let's see, Let's see what the. Uh, Pittsburgh is going to have. Let's see who's going to be guest posing there. It's funny, Dave. You posted that on RX, and I, I always make this claim on the right. show, like, "Oh, don't read comments and this and that." So I, I was impressed with. Labrada, so I read the comments and no one else was impressed. I'm I'm impressed with the size for sure. So I was there's you know a disconnect between the the peanut gallery and yeah, I think people I, think he needs to be just in, in, in shape more. I, I think he gets in shape. I, I think he just he needs the size too. I really do. I think this was a good move on his part, put on this this kind of size. Because now when he diets down, he's gonna have more pop going on more happening you, you got to grow and he, he's in his growth year still you know what i mean he's got to put that size on you can't just stay the same and expect to beat these these freaks that are winning the olympia now now here's the the, the pittsburgh guest posing is going to be in, interesting this is kind of like i always call this you or you i think you might have said it first this is like the all-star game right no, I, I labeled it the pre pre judging of the Olympia. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of the all star game. You know, you want to see who's who's going to be uh, contending for the World Series later this year. And so you got Hunter's going to be there, Samson, Ram Ramy's going to be there. Okay. I heard he's going to be there. Lunsford, Nick Walker, Andrew Jack. Oh, Andrew's going to be there? That's interesting. How's he looking, Chris? I haven't seen him. And it always says special appearance by Chris Bunsen, which that doesn't, what that means is that he might or might not be on stage. We, depend, we, we don't know. He won't be on stage. I'd love to see him next to these guys just to see how he stacks up with them. You don't think he'll pose? No. 
Yeah, I guess it doesn't. Does he guess photos? He doesn't need to guess photos. All he needs to do is show up and sign pictures. That's true. So that's going to be uh, coming up first weekend in May. It's always a great show. Actually, second weekend this year. So it's May 10th and 11th. And what is the New York Pro the weekend after that, I think, right? Yeah. Weekend after. yeah. I'll be there, probably. I went to the, uh, you know, this is this is right up your alley. I went to the uh, the dermatologist for my annual skin check. You know, you got to go for skin check. I'm sure you still go for skin checks, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they burned or they froze two suspicious spots on my head. Right here and here. What, moles or something? No, it wasn't mold. They said it was just like flaky skin. It was suspicious. So she said, yeah. if it goes away and they don't see anything, then don't worry about it. You know, if they want to make yeah. sure I can see precancerous type stuff or stuff that looks a little weird, they'll, they'll freeze it off. Um, I'm sure, do you ever have that happen? Do they ever do that for you, especially being a skin cancer survivor? I go, I go in and they say it, it's, it's barely suspicious. When they use yeah. the S word, I say, take it off. That's me too. Me too. You know, I was having this I conversation. Do this, I do this day all the time too, to like, like <laughs> right. beautiful mold. Yeah, I do too. I even I had something on my on my on the palm of my hand that I'm always picking. So I'm like, freeze that too. <laughs> to just to play it safe. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's you're better off safe. Sorry, I, I you know my sister and I had this conversation, and it, it was like really like a Seinfeld conversation. But, you know, you ever see people who have, like, these big moles on their face? And I, and I don't mean to offend anyone if you have a mole on your face. But if you have a mole on your face, get it taken off. Because you don't know. Those things can turn cancerous. And, and I don't think that they look really good, do you? <laughs> Unless it's what's her face. What? What's a, what's a, like, like what's De Niro's a, mole does not, like, I, I, I know people. No, but what's, 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 uh, what's the actress with the uh, mole here? I hate it. Um, there's a few of them. So uh, Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford. Yeah. I thought yeah. they took hers off, but she had a lot of makeup over it. I covering it up the other day. I saw her on TV. Arnold had his little mole taken off of his face. Remember you used to have that like that big thing with the hairs growing out of it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This. So but I I, I it, first of all, it doesn't look good. I don't Take care what seconds. anyone says. It takes seconds, it's cheap, and they can turn cancer. It's the yes. same thing I Dave, I always I, we're on the same page when I, because I had, you know, cancer. Uh, yeah, I know. Molds and when I see people with molds, I'm like, just, I can't believe like doctors, when they go in for physical, don't say, well, just snip it off. It takes seconds. I know. I know. But, and you know what? I see people with like the, the molds, like a half an inch off their fucking face too. Yeah. Take it off, cut it off. I don't, you know, people say, I don't want a scar. The mold doesn't look better than the scar. <laughs> right, and your face doesn't scar that badly anyway. This, the face well, this day, really the way they, they can they can take it off so quickly and like yes. they can burn it. It doesn't no. cause like scars. No, no, and even if they have to give put a little put a little a scalpel in there, they snip it right off. It's it's not a big deal. Trust me, guys. Don't leave moles on your face, please. And beauty marks, different story, but they'll check the beauty marks with those lights too and see if there's. I had a beauty mark on my on my on my chest. For years, and one day I went to the the, the, um, the dermatologist, and they're like, you know what? I don't like the way that looks. I'm take, let's take it off, and he actually cut the whole thing off. So they, you can't. The woke crowd won't let you call it a beauty mark anymore. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that anymore. You got to no, call you it. Can't. What do you, what do you have to call it? Indigenous birthmark. Indigenous <laughs> birthmark. <laughs> uh, oh my god! But I was having this conversation with my sister, and she was like agreeing with me. Like she's like. Like, you know, it's just not an attract. It's not attractive either. I don't know why people think their moles are so attractive, but maybe it's because it distinguishes their face. I don't know. I just don't see how people like those things. But from a health standpoint, listen to Chris, please. Chris had, had a mole. It didn't do anything about it. It turned to a melanoma. He almost died from it. So take yeah. it off. Take it off. All right. Let's do the, let's talk about the Arnold Brazil. Let's start off with your guy because, you know, He's looking really good. You've been sending me a lot of pictures. Good veto. Uh, what's yeah. uh, what can we expect from him? What, what's he weighing? What's it, what's his height? First of all, we were having this debate on another show, on, on Xavier's show. Actually, I was talking about this. And, five, uh, seven. five seven. Oh, because they were saying he was like five five or five four. I said, there's no, no way he's that short. No, he's five seven. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And what is he weighing? Uh, two forty nine. Wow. Yeah, he looks good. 
He was no pictures. I, I sent you those pictures. Don't, no, don't I'm not putting them up. I don't do anything unless you give me the go-ahead. Yeah. You put anything Russian, up on page? The Russians and the Brazilians may get upset. If, if I, <laughs> I just disclosed the weight, so now that could upset someone. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Neither do I care. Well, at least you don't have the, the, the Brazilians are not like what's, what's carrying on with the Mexicans and we're carrying on with uh, Lee Priest. Have you been following that whole fiasco? No, no, no. What's going on there? So there was this like influencer, Daddy Ioli, his name is, and he's like a, a big Mexican influencer. He's got over a million followers. And there's a video of him, I guess, from 2022 of him like choking a cat and punching it in the face. Not super hard, but it was. But it was an, uh, it was an, it was it was unnecessary. So all these animal rights people went crazy. Lee Priest loves, uh, you know, animals, and he said, "This I can't believe that a company would sponsor him because he's sponsored by that young LA company, that clothing company." So they suspended him first, and then they um, and then they actually got rid of him. I think Dragon Farmer got rid of him as well uh, because there was a lot of people, you know, complaining about that that he's an animal animal abuser. And then now, so all of his fans now are going after Lee saying that Lee beats his wife and that he's not allowed to see his daughter, which is not true. It's all bullshit. And they're like trying to like, you know, basically, you know, jump on the, you know, cancel Lee Priest type of situation. So it's pretty stupid. You know, look, the guy, the guy did what he did and now he's got to, you know, pay the price for it. Look, we all do stupid shit sometimes. And sometimes you got to, you know, pay the price for it. He hopefully can maybe do some, give some money or donate some money. Some oh, oh, they'll make him, they'll make him take like a class in like, <laughs> That's right. Look what happened to Michael Vick. I mean, Michael Vick Romans ruined his whole career. It didn't ruin his career, you know. So. Pet care and uh, whole nine yards. <laughs> this, this, oh, people think when they become popular on on um, on social media that they can that they're above the law, so to speak. They can do whatever they want. And well, now who said that? I'm just saying. I, I'm saying that. I said people think that. I'm not saying it's true. Because it's, it's it's easy for your ego to become drunk. Yeah, this is the guy. Seriously. Yep. That is, you know, it's easy for you to like. You know what the findings are saying? They're yeah. Lying. yeah, they're lying yeah. about Lee because Lee didn't beat his wife, and he's and he and he has he can see his daughter anytime he wants. But they're saying. Oh, how could you condemn him for for hurting animals when you're beating your wife? In other words, like to say, like the beating the animals is not so bad. Don't let's just discount that because you're worse than he is. You know, <laughs> people can rationalize anything, Chris. It's crazy. It really is. It really is. So, Lee, we support you. We know you're a good guy. You, you, Lee's a, a, a the protector of the underdog, even when it is an actual dog or cat. Met so. All right. Getting back to the Arnold Brazil and good veto. Who who is your who would you say is among the favorites, do you think, going into the Arnold Brazil? Um, Raphael Brendeo, would you say? Yeah, Raphael's the overwhelming favorite. Because he just plays third at the Arnold. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then other, you know, heavyweights include Carlos uh Thomas, Thomas Jr. Jr. Let's talk about Rafa Brendeo first, because I want you what could pop what would you say would be the wrong strategy for Rafa to, to do going into this show? Um, I don't think there's a wrong strategy because uh, because you know all he needs to do is show up like he did at the Arnold. Right. Is that enough to win here? You think or yeah. no? Yeah, yeah, that's enough to win because they're going to be you know. No, whoever they is, you know, judges, whatever, you know, people want to see him and they want to see him again like he was at the Arnold. So the, the you know, the, the, the size, the shape, the lines, um, that's what sets him apart. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's, uh, you know, you can't, you can't lose your lines. You know what I mean? In other words, you know, the you, you can someone can lose condition or they can lose fullness. The lines are gonna be there whether he's lighter or heavier. Yeah. Yeah, no, he he has a, a men's physique look. I mean excuse me, a classic physique look, but on a on a on a bodybuilder physique, you know, with enough muscle, you know. And I think that that's 
his calling card, like you said. And if he gives up conditioning to try to come in bigger, it's a big mistake for him because he gives up those aesthetics. Well, I think I think if he came in bigger, it could still it still works because the lines would still be there, you know. Yeah, right. Because right. It's, it's not an exaggeration to say it's a classic looking physique on an open bodybuilder. So big, it works. You know, smaller and tighter, it works. And why? And what it works is is that it's it's it it negates a lot of other looking physiques in any show because right. you know if someone's bigger your eyes will still go back and if someone's tighter your eyes will still go back to Raphael's physique mm. <clears throat> in what scenario do you see a carlos thomas jr possibly winning the show like what what does he have to do to win this show he has more muscle obviously than a rafa um his obviously his thing has always been trying to get enough conditioning to you know to complement that all well, that muscle you said you really like the way he looked here in texas what if he brings this look to the stage can this beat rafa um not this one but an improved version of this is dangerous i don't you know i, I don't think the video really reflects how much muscle he carried in texas um or carries now um but that that side leg is like this shot right here is pandemonium yeah it is just so crazy big um he's got you know, he, so he doesn't really have any weak body parts you know that's well that's that's part of it too he doesn't have any weak body parts and he has you know he has the delts he has the shoulders he has the arms he has the legs he has the width on the back last spread so um you know he and he has he has a freaky body and bodybuilding judges uh they love well they love conditioning of course but they also love like everyone else like fan freak shows yeah and we yeah. don't get you know he's kind of like you know i put him in the category of roly winkler in that uh you know he's super freaky you know super round super freaky really showy body parts um and that's a compliment actually to put him in the category of roly winkler because Roley competed, uh, you know, in lineups that were had a lot of depth, and he did really well at some shows. Some shows he didn't do so, you know, really well, but he was always someone with enormous amounts of bells and whistles that could be highly competitive in any lineup. So, and judges like that type of physique. Yeah, I agree with you. I, agree I mean, who with doesn't you. like who doesn't like freaky mass with you know good waistline? Yeah. If Phil Heath was as wide as Carlos Thomas Jr., he probably would have won the Olympia, you know, 15 times because. Well, you know, Phil, Phil is an anomaly. What, what a, what an, a lot of muscle on what a narrow body. Right. And, yeah. And, and what, what happened was, you know, the 2000, actually, if you, you the 2010, 11, 12, 13 Phil uh, had a really small waist. Right. And then after, after 14, after 14, things started to turn. It's funny you bring him up because things started to turn on him in that he was still outstanding, outstanding, but didn't have the impact that he had previously because his waist had gotten wider. And he's in, not in that a, wide shoulder wise. Yeah. Yeah. So it so it, it negated this like big impact that he had. I mean, he still, you know, he still had, of course, the shoulders, the triceps, this, right. that, back, X. Um, but, uh, you know, where he, he, at one point he looked invincible. Yeah. Um, he started, to, <coughs> you know, he started to look less dominating. Yep. And and like I said, if he had a little bit more width on him, he probably could have oh, yeah. taken his weight for another him. few, right? Yeah. yeah. If he had more like structural, natural structural width, it yeah. wouldn't even have mattered if he got bigger and his waist got wider because it would have, you know. I think that's why Jay got away with it so long because it didn't matter. He was so wide, Jay. Yeah, Jay was, Jay was, it, it's so funny when we're talking about them, Dave, because I saw a picture the other day of, of Phil 
Uh, well, it's probably because Phil's had the, the movie, which I haven't seen come out. Yeah, the uh, uh, documentary. We got to take a look at that at some yeah. point. Yeah, it's not doing as good as George's documentary, by the way. <laughs> no, the Guru is doing much better. Uh, the Guru, so, by the way, my interview with, with the Guru himself, George Farrell, will be uh, this coming week. And I actually asked him, you know, who does a better impression of you, George, me or, or King Kamali? And he claims to have not heard either one of our impressions. Oh, I, I, why don't you just give me that? Yeah, I would have told you that right there. If you, if you, if you, had, I would, if you had said, who do you think he said? I would have said, he says he's never heard either one. <laughs> but he was a good sport about it. He knows that I, I, we just break his balls. He doesn't take anything personal. But uh, we were talking about that. I said that bodybuilding talk versus friendship talk. And, and there's, there's a difference. You guys can argue about who's better coach. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you'll sit down and you'll eat with them, you know. So it's, it's, it's uh, you know, people think that what we do here is they don't realize that a lot of it's an act, you know, and we're, we're handling it up for the camera, so to speak. So, although I did, <laughs> I did, I did watch the, I sent someone who had never seen the Guru Wars video. Yeah. You, you and George were arguing in, in the lounge in yeah, Brazil. I'm making like, it into my documentary and I'm going to, I'm going to put that. <laughs> That might be Chris's all-time greatest performance in Guru Wars. And I forgot that I had done an intro with the Star Wars music. You, know, you, you, would, you would take that and you would, you would ask, can I, can I play it? And I said, of course. Yeah. I, well, said, but I, I did an intro. Yeah. I did an huh? intro like, like I was reading the Star Wars, like, you know, monologue, prelogue. And then I went into the Guru Wars. And then it's funny because – but the funny, the reason why we call it Guru Wars is because Jay Cutler is happened to be in the labs listening to the whole thing. He's off camera, and then he just steps into the camera and he's like, "Guru Wars, Guru <laughs> Wars." And at one point, he actually started defending you a little bit too. But at the end of the day, it was all fun, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a, if you guys haven't seen it, put Guru Wars RX Muscle into the search engine at, at, at YouTube and watch the video. You'll. Dave you can monetize it for another. I think yeah, it paid I don't even know if I can monetize it. It's got the Star Wars music in it, but it was, it was, it was very funny. It was a very funny video. Anyway, so George will be on with me uh, next week. It was a very good interview. I think people will really enjoy it. Uh, we had a good, good talk, him and I. All right, getting back. Now, someone is saying in the comments, and I don't know because I never can trust these guys, that Carlos Thomas Jr. is not competing. He dropped out. Is that true? Uh, Someone's saying that they was said on the uh, on the Dennis James podcast. I don't know. Call Xavier. See if Xavier knows. Yeah, Xavier, are you listening? Xavier, to this it Xavier. I know, but I I know the answer. It could be yes, it could be no, but I can't. <laughs> but, but I'm going to do a thousand videos on it. <laughs> I would think that that would be a big. Uh, that would be a big. Uh, like highlight of, of, of the Menace podcast, if, if that was the case. I don't see anyone saying that Carlos Thomas Jr. No, it, it, it would take that, you know what? Yeah. I'll, I'll okay. text his father. He's probably watching the show anyway. I told you last week to get his father on the show this week. We should have. We should have. Right? And then we. I said that last week, but you're too busy to remember. I'm too busy to remember. <laughs> and, and the beauty would be that Besides, we would think he's coming on to handicap the show in context yeah. of how Carlos is going to do. <laughs> but now we would be able to like bypass Xavier and go right to the horse's mouth <laughs> and find yeah. out is he or is he not doing the show? <laughs> I mean, I'm texting it right now. John Del Rose is not doing the show. Well, I, yeah, he, he has a reason. He's just done but, two shows. I know, but it, I think I, I I I spoke with John today. Oh, you did? And what did he say? Yeah, I I, t I was surprised. I, someone told me he was doing the show, and I feel that it is a missed opportunity for him. Oh, you think he should do it? Yeah. Hmm. And why you think he can do? You can be top three here. That's what I would think, right? Yeah, you know, and 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 bodybuilding judges and fans are fickle. You know, John has a physique that is not going to dominate you, but if he's in the mix for comparisons, like in the Arnold, Ohio, and in the Ohio, uh, the UK, Arnold, he's in the mix, and you think, okay, he's in the mix, he looks good, but that's it, and you know, you you take a double take and you think like, okay, he's really, really good this year. 
And, you know, I, I think the more you can put that type of physique on stage, the more you pound respect with the judges is like, you know, this wasn't just like a one-off, you know what I mean? I, right. I you know, nailed it two, two times in a row and it just leaves an impression on, on judges that, okay, he's a player. Now, it was his reason for not doing it because he he realizes that if he's going to go to the Olympia, he needs to win a show and maybe yeah he yeah feels... he needs he needs to win a show yeah he yeah. needs, he to, needs win to win a show. show that he could actually yeah yeah he's going to try to like you know fill up put on a little size and then hit hit a weaker in. show yeah that's smart yeah. smart no because he does three major shows he places really well but then he doesn't wind up at the Olympia and then some guy who's not even that good as him does a small show and wins the show and then and then qualifies to the Olympia. I can understand his frustration with that, you know? Yeah. It makes sense. Which, which you know, leads leads you to believe that there's, there's a strategic, you know, component to competing nowadays. You have to pick <laughs> your shows correctly, you know? Yeah, I don't believe in strategy. I haven't gotten a response from Carlos Senior, which is not a good sign. That could That's be not a good sign. sign. They no. gave you, you, you allowed me, I was just going to finish that sentence for you, too. <laughs> George didn't see any impressions, and it's not a good sign no. If Dr. Richard didn't uh, <laughs> Richard respond to you. I may do a documentary that of Guru was. I may do one of uh, Carlos Jr.'s father. <laughs> he, when he, he used not. to bring, it's going to start off like, remember, remember when uh, remember when uh, Tiger Woods' father had him on, yeah. on the Murph Griffin show or Mike Douglas and <laughs> nailing a 20 yard putt? Yeah. It'll start yeah. off with like Carlos Jr. helping his father in the heating and air conditioning business when he's like eight, and his father saying, "Hey, hit a front double." <laughs> it's a front double. And it says you can be Mr. Olympia. <laughs> oh man, Tony O'Burton. Dangerous. Where does he fit into this this mix? I don't know. The, 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 he. That's from last sweater. year when he won the New York Pro, obviously. Yeah, spoiler, spoiler. So he anything, can definitely do some damage in this lineup. Yeah, anything who's can better, Who's better, you think, Della Rosa or Antonio Burton? Della Rosa, good question. Because they, 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 they got similar physiques, you know. They have similar, right, you know, John's got the, John has got um, still more size and width on him, but, but, um, Antonio is, um, he's like a little Dexter Jackson Jr. Yeah. Meaning I'm thinking we might see Tonio versus uh, um, Rafa, you know, for that, for the title. You know, he's impressive. He's got a lot of wow. He's not the biggest guy, but he's got a lot of fucking. Yeah, that's, that's, Dave, you, you just summed it up. You, the, the two words that you need to take away from that is not the biggest, uh, many words, not the biggest guy and impressive. You know, Dexter, not the biggest guy, but impressive. Yeah. So, just when you think Dexter's not going to do anything, he wins the show, you know, because it's just, well, you know, you know, he could win Dexter one shows on lack. We lost Chris there for a second. The technician has disappeared. I bet he got a phone call. Lee Pree, stop calling Chris. <laughs> no, that, that's a tenant calling me. Uh, <laughs> no, no more bed bugs, I hope. Oh, I get it. You, you want my invoice? <laughs> I could fly first class if I didn't have a bed bug. Well, what you, what you spend on bed bugs? Every Friday. <laughs> that's what happens when you have uh, 250 uh, apartments you're renting. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't it's, know how you do it. It's 249, but I call it 250. No, it's, it's not 249. How many is it now? It's 150. Oh, okay. It's still a lot. It's still a lot. Yeah. 150 potential phone calls a day. <laughs> Lee Priest is going to Mexico to see all his fans. He's so funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, like when you get on the bad side of the Brazilians, now Lee's on the bad side of the Mexicans. So. They're all after him. I like this this name, Trenbolona. Tre, tre, 
a <laughs> bologna sandwich. <laughs> they say you're using your neighbor's Wi-Fi, Chris. They said they're stealing, you're stealing your neighbor's Wi-Fi for the show. <laughs> we have some very, very creative. If I can field some of the, uh, the the people who post comments on a regular basis on our on our uh, feed here, I probably can make a whole new TV show just from these guys. All right, so we so we, we kind of went over the, the the favorites here. We have Tony Burton. Yeah. Okay. We have Good Vito. Yeah. We have Rafa. Yeah. Potentially Carlos Junior uh, Thomas Junior. I hope he's going to be in the show. And uh, and John, you said is out of the show, right? Yeah. So we really have four guys, you know, that are going to be the top guys here. You know, and no one's super dominant of all of them. I mean, Rafa plays third, obviously, at the Arnold. USA earlier this year, a couple of weeks ago, but pretty much, I think, you know, it, it's any man show. Wouldn't you say? Um, you know, I, I would say you, you have to see people on stage, you know, you, you'd have to say it can't be any man's show when you, you know, if you take like, you know, Raphael third at the Arnold, 10th at the Olympia when there were like 34 guys or 36 guys, you know, it's hard to say he's not like dead on, hands on, overwhelming favorite to win. You know, um, so it's, you know, it's, it's like him and everyone else on, on paper. Right. Right. And I, in the I, real world, and in the real world, only because you know when when you have when you you know let's face it, there's not a, a lot of guys who are put together right. You know what I mean? Right. Bartley Weaver just uh, said he ate uh, thirteen thousand calories, six pounds of Easter food. He's one of our eating champions. He's How much weight? He, he he probably loses weight when he does that. I don't think he gains. See, any weight. He sh he should be he should be Dave. You should come up with a new product. Of course, Bob Chicken Little would get pissed. But you could actually you could put put it on since it is your TV show. You could put it on your YouTube station. <laughs> but you could have the guy endorse it, and you could call it. What's what's that? Dan? Is it periactin that increases your appetite? Oh yeah, I got to get a food. Yeah, periactin is the yeah. yeah okay, what's the, what's the guy's name? Hart. What's what's Hartley's Bartley name? Bartley Weaver. Bartley, we've had him on. Yeah, Bartley. Uh, you could call it uh, periactin for for Bartley. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, say that that's what he uses to eat thirteen thousand calories. Yeah, <laughs> we can call it like Weaver lies or something like that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have you know what? You have posing coaches. You have, you know. You know, we'll call it gorge coaches, instead of any gorge. Just, you, know, you need a you need a cheat meal coach. Why don't we why don't we call it gorge? You know how like they have end gorge like the yeah. I'll just call it gorge, you know, it's like it'll help you fucking eat. There you go. I get a million dollar idea. I better pay, I better trademark it quickly. Before By the dollar. way, did you see one of the weight loss drugs that's selling for a thousand dollars? I was gonna send you on Bloomberg. You know, I send you those Bloomberg articles here and there. Yeah. Take well, a guess my, to, to, to make the one thousand dollar drug. Oh, it's probably, it's probably ten bucks. Eighty nine cents. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Manjaro. Someone, someone told me on on and I someone told me or I saw it on Instagram maybe where the iPhone cost ten bucks and I told my son and my no son. No way, there's no way that there's no way it costs ten bucks to me. How do you know? It's impossible. How do so, you know? Yeah, I don't think I so. mean how much does it cost to make two hundred dollar pairs of Nikes? Five bucks? Maybe. Fifty cents, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, just because it's metal and electronics. But yeah, but this chip this is like uh, there's like like a rare earth metal stuff in there. Yeah, too. well, they they put slave labor to work in in Africa and steal it from them. I'm serious. You think they pay people twenty five dollars? No, $7. no, no. Well, the, yeah, the labor the labor cost is much lower. That's why they don't make them here. The reason why they make them in China and India is because if we made them here, they said they would be three times as expensive. Well, they don't. They don't. They don't get the raw material here either. No, I mean they no. don't. They don't get the raw, raw material in China or wherever they're making it. India, they get it. Where do they get it? Taiwan makes all the chips. I heard. That's why we don't want uh, China to take over Taiwan. Yeah. You think with something as important as an iPhone, we would we would figure out a way to make all the stuff. Oh God! Oh God! Right? Oh, God. Don't get me going. 
Right. I mean, it just makes sense. There's certain things that you need, computers, uh, phones. I mean, that it, it, it behooves us to make the shit here so that we don't have to Think. be dependent on it. We, we, we can't make a washing machine here. We can't make a dishwasher here. We can't make a uh, blow dryer here. We can't make toasters here. We can't make microwaves or stoves. None <laughs> of it is made here. I know. But we have big companies like Meta, Facebook, Google, right. and Apple. And last week, the people you pay your taxes to want to break up Apple and destroy it. Oh, do they realize that the newest thing? They're too powerful. <laughs> you know so what? It's, let's, it's let's the only break, business in the United States, Chris, that actually turns a profit. That's why. Let, let's just break it up, destroy it, and, and send all the business to Chinese companies. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what the answer that, is. That is, that is like, it's insane. Thank God, we, thank God we can lose ourselves in, in, in bodybuilding land. We can talk about bodybuilders. It doesn't really make any, it doesn't have any bearing on the world at all. Yeah. <laughs> we, can escape, yeah. we can escape into the world of bodybuilding. Yeah. Phil, Jay, and Ronnie are too powerful in their wins. We, we have break to them not up. allow them to compete. Or they yeah. can't, it's, it's unfair. <laughs> this guy says, meta in Hebrew means dead. Well, the stock ain't dead, bro. It's at 500 bucks. No. Well, you know, they, Meta wanted to uh, they wanted to buy or break up uh, TikTok, right? That's what they were yeah, saying. The government wants to get rid of TikTok too. Yeah, yeah well, he, that's his competition. Well, the, well, they want to force the only one who wants. TikTok. <coughs> of course, it just never ends. The only one who wants to not break up TikTok is Trump. Because well, he wants, no, he wants to do it himself when he gets elected. No, no, he's he's mad at Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, oh. Help steal the election from him, according to him. <laughs> That's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're so right, he right. said, if we if we break up if we break up TikTok, Meta's going to get stronger. Well, one's an American company, one's not. Yeah. Well, he thinks that what they'll do is they'll censor the election. He doesn't care really about TikTok until after the election's over. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Then he'll break it up. He wants to break it up. You're right. <laughs> That's called politics. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's like it's like the border. It's like the border. You know, they want to. Trump really wants to put the wall up. If if Biden decides, you know what, it's, I think I'm going to close the border. But Trump will be like, nah, keep it open until I take over. Well, they did that. That happened three weeks ago, where they were they're putting together a border vote, like to right. strengthen the border, and and uh, Trump like bullied everyone and to, the, the Republicans to like <laughs> vote it down, even though they were the ones who brought it to the forefront in the first place. All right. Yeah. <laughs> This guy's making a prediction. Antonio first, Rafa second, Good Vito third, Horse MD fourth. Is Horse MD in the show? No. No, I didn't think so either. I didn't see him on the list. Didn't see him on the list. Sorry, guys. I, William Martins is on the list. No, oh, he's, he's good. He's very good. Yeah, he used to work with him. Yeah. He's big. He doesn't have the structure some of these guys do, but he's got the, uh, he's definitely got a lot of size on him. Yeah. Well, he's dangerous. He's beaten, you know, he's. I will say it, you know, here, here, Brazil bodybuilding news. Uh, he's beaten Olympians under my watch. Yeah, that's true. He's beaten multiple who people beat? who qualified for the Olympia. Oh, who'd he beat? Uh, Theo, the French guy. Oh, Theo Leguinaria. Yeah. yeah, he's beaten a few people. So Bartley said he gained 12 pounds when he did that, you know, the Easter challenge. It's it's it. He's a failure. He he can't. It's not even a. It's not even one pound per thousand calories. <laughs> Which goes to show you that that whole that whole theory about you know, one pound thirty five hundred calories is bullshit, yeah. right? Well, he's what he needs to do is he needs to take your gorge product. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, if I make the gorge product, I should just have him endorse it. Go, go, yeah, that's, that's all good. point. That's all point. That's what I brought it up. Hold on, hold on. People, people would buy it. You're, it's a great idea. I, I I have to give you credit for that one. Listen, although I if, came up if, with the name, if, if, I came up with the name, Chris. It's all in the name. Hold on. If, yeah. If he if you made a video of him taking those gorge pills and then sitting down to thirteen thousand calories, and then the next day in the gym telling the viewing audience that he had the best pump, like so intense that you know. That he thought, you know, he was he gonna explode the hospital because his pecs were so like pumped up. He thought he was gonna pass out because the blood left his head. 
um, people would buy it. Let's, let's play the video he sent me. Oh, this is, oh, maybe this is just, oh, it's just, this is just a picture. I thought you sent me the video. So this is, uh, this was his Easter. I guess he ate a lot of junk food too, like cakes and that cake, that carrot. I see that carrot cake in the, in the foreground. Look at that. Look at that chocolate bunny. Holy mackerel. Lee, is that, is that copacetic? Him eating a bunny? Is that, uh, is that warrants for starting a revolution against Bartley? <laughs> He's a great eater. I told him, the to I, he knows, I've said this among him. I told him, don't focus on bodybuilding anymore. Focus on eating. You'll make more money, I told him. Well, you told some people about bodybuilders who never took your advice for the WWE. That's right. Right? Yep. Did you I see, guess. speaking of, do you know how oh, much? I just got a word from Carlos Sr. Carlos is not doing it. Confirmed. So Carlos Thomas Jr. out of the Arnold Brazil. Oh, God, see if he wants to come on the show. Yeah, I don't know. Let me Dave, ask. Dave, Dave, do you know how much? Take a guess how much Vince McMahon sold in stock this week. How much? <coughs> Just take a guess. A billion. Oh, my God. Good guess. Half a billion. Really? What, why, why did he do that? Last three weeks, he's, he sold half a billion in stock. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Lee. Good point. Do so you think he's trying to cash out? Well, he did cash out, but he, he probably needs to. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to defame. I don't want to get in trouble. Why would you get in he needs, trouble? He needs the money, Dave. And the stock is high. So what if you wake up? What would he need the money for? He's got plenty of money. He's going to have court cases. Oh, oh you think he's going to have some of that money? <laughs> oh, I got you. Okay. And he's thinking, well, gosh, six months down the road. You know, Vince McMahon never makes a bad move other than the moves that he makes that get him in trouble. Yeah. No, he's very good uh, business-wise. Very good business -wise. Unbelievable. So he could be, we could be, we're in March. He could be in August and say, God, had I sold the stock then, I could have, uh, Versus if I sell it now, now it's down 20%. So it's that 500 million would only be like, you know, 375 right. million. Right, right. Well, you got to, at some point, you got to start cashing out, I guess. And, you know, he's not. Oh, when you're that age, what are you going to yeah. do? You can't get in the U Haul yeah. to the cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. I sent Carlos the, the link. Let's see if he clicks on it. He's not really responding. Click on it. It'll be a, a therapy. He needs therapy. Tell him. Yeah. Tell him. Chris says, Chris, Chris, you need to air it out so that people don't misquote, misjudge, and miscalculate. We need to hear it from the horse's mouth. Here's what bodybuilders do. Oh, too bad, too bad, too bad. They're like, oh, I get to move off the screen. I, I, I wonder why he dropped that. He was, I mean, he was pretty. Who he broke that news? DJ. I, well, I think a few people were saying it, and I guess DJ said, you know, oh, they had a death in the family that was very close to Carlos, and he's not taking it well. He'd rather not discuss it. Okay, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I know how that goes. Yeah. All right, well, we send our condolences out to uh, the Carlos Thomas <laughs> family, and, uh, you know, sorry that you're not going to make it. Hopefully, you think we'll see, maybe we'll see him at New York Pro. Yeah, that's, that's. Uh... Let me ask him. Five weeks. Don't ask him if he had death in the family. It's probably equally as bothersome to the father. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll let him. He'll make an announcement, I'm sure, whatever he's going to do. But well, you just right. so that's going to make it better for the guys who are in it. I'm sure that you know that was a, a, a sigh of relief for a couple of guys. That that's what I said. Yeah, couldn't take, couldn't knock him off, but it hurts the lineup a little bit. But I think we still have a really good lineup now. At more than ever, John De La Rosa should have done it right. You know, Dave, uh, uh, Steve Weinberger said one time, I told you that, like about somebody competing and he said, uh, you know, what if something happens? I remember him telling that to the athlete. The athlete's like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm, you know, and it's my translation. The, the, the bodybuilder's like, I'm focused, I'm, I'm in. And he said, what if you get a, you know, you would think you would say, what if you get hurt in the gym? What, what if, uh, you know, X, Y, Z happens? Or Steve said, what if you get like a stomach ache, a stomach ache, a belly ache, I think he called it, like four days before. Mm. 
Yeah. Meaning you can't, you can't prep for the show the way you want to prep. In other words, you never, you never know what can happen. So that's why I said when, when previously in the show about John, it's, I think it's kind of a missed opportunity for him. And this, there you go. Someone, someone who's like would match up hard against him is out of the show. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking, and, I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> Carlos's sponsor is not happy either because I mean, he's been living in Brazil for the last couple yeah. of months training for the show. And so it's uh, got to be a little bit of a letdown, but look, you know, not everyone is a, uh, you know, can bury their emotions. Yeah. Dave, Dave, it goes back to like, I, it's funny. I was, I was thinking a lot, a lot of those things recently about it ties into like anything can happen. You know, I, I forget, I forget, I forget. Like I was thinking like Sean Roden's chase and Phil, cause Phil's got this movie out now. And, and I know distinctly of like what periods of time where I said, okay, he's very vulnerable to, uh, to, to Sean. And it was when Sean came along with like a crazy midsection because of course Sean's midsection got bigger too. But in terms of anything can happen, you know, 15, in my mind, I thought Sean won that prejudging for sure, like solidly. 16, Sean came back and it wasn't really the Sean Roden of 15. And of course, 17, he had the broken jaw. So the only time he got to really come back after 15 it was 15, right? Yeah. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. I'm just going to skip over 16. 17 broken jaw, falls to fifth. The next time he's got a chance, really, was 18, and he wins. Got it? Yep. So why did I skip over 16? 16, his stomach was completely screwed up the last Ulcer, right? five, five days before the for the Olympia. He couldn't eat anything because it felt like i'm eating uh razor blades so all he ate for five days was glazed donuts <laughs> and the calories uh, Dave, Dave, i'm sure that the, the carbs are only like maybe 350 300 you know what i mean right or fat the protein protein was zero yeah zero and had those like glazed donuts you know and the weird thing is, so 16 and 17, uh, he was getting ready for the Arnold. No, no, seven, seven, 17 was a broken jaw, which like the whole year was shot. So he had to come back in 18. But it goes back to, you know, that ties in nicely with, um, you, you know what, when Sean met Raphael in 18, you know what he said? What? Reminds me of me. Hmm. And I said, what do you mean? He said, because in a tank top, he looks like, you know, people are just going to discount him. Like they discount me. And, well, we, were, uh, we were talking about Rodin on the, uh, on the Xavier show and how he would have done at the Olympia this past year. I said he would have destroyed everyone. Yeah. Destroyed. The structure is too good. For these guys. And he had the conditioning. Well, I mean, he's a different different animal. He's he's yeah. he's, he's very, what people don't realize about Sean is he's very wide. Yes. Um, and he's got the, good legs, really good legs. Yeah, crazy midsection. Um, anyhow, it's funny that that you, you brought that up. Yeah, structure, you know. Well, I said it first, and then you know, Stan, you know, obviously who trained with him said, "I agree." And then people started thinking about it and saying, well, yeah, I think you might be right because people forget how good he was, you know, it just because he, he left so quickly, you know, because with the yeah. Well, I, you know, I wanted to contextualize that the, the 16 year, he got second in the Olympia and he did not look good in my eyes. And I know why he did not look good because he, you know, he had the, he didn't know it then, but he had ulcers. And then, you know, so it just like 15 came on, you know, he came on like gangbusters, 13, 14, 15, especially 15. And then 16 was really a wash of a year. It was so frustrating because right. he had that final week. It goes back to Tyson with Steve saying you could get a bellyache. 
you know, it sounds like a kid, like, to, you, know, you know, your son, like, Dad, my stomach hurts. Yeah. That can screw up your whole entire last week. And you put mm -hmm. the entire work in for the full year only to put up something on stage that, you know, people say, oh, you look great. And you're like, that's not what I was planning to put on stage. You know, then 17 was the jar. Then the only, you know, the, the last time he had a chance to put stuff together was 18. Mm. Yep. And then, uh, you know, he won and he lost it, you know, after that. And he wasn't able to ever compete. Very sad. But at least he won in Olympia. Not many guys can say that. And uh, he'll be forever remembered as a great champion. All right. We're going to wrap up tonight. Thank you for joining us. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this Arnold coming up this weekend. I'll actually be at Mel Chansey's show on uh, Saturday night. Probably, well, what is the, is the Arnold on a Saturday or is it Sunday this year? I don't even remember. Saturday. It's next Saturday. Saturday. All right. So we'll, we'll get some, uh, I'll have to, when I get home, I'll have to do some updates on that. But Mel's got his show in Punta Gorda. I told him I'd go and hang out with him. I got a client in the show. Now I'm, I'm actually training a natural kid. He's really good. Classic physique. So oh, my son. Really my really son good. is contacted you, has he? What? My son's yeah, not, yeah, I'm training your son. Yeah. Don't tell. Is he coming you know, down to do the show? You're not poaching my son, are you? I poached him. George gave me some tips on how to poach. How to poach. <laughs> I love you, George. I can't wait for the interview to come out. You guys are going to love it. Anyway, we're going to wrap up today, as we say every week here at Heavy Muscle Radio with Heavy Muscle Radio. The truth hurts. It does. We'll see you next week.